Oh, the joy, as my penance suffering alone should come to an end. I had everything I needed, except, of course, another human life. As I was not about to give mine up, I knew that I must follow in the footsteps of my ancestors, and once again steal into the night for some unfortunate soul to become a part in one of my experiments. Under the cover of darkness, I went into the village and happened upon the child and his dog. There were not any restrictions on who the poor soul could be, so this child was as good a target as any, vulnerable and easily manipulated. Using a few magic words, the boy and his dog were under my control. I marched them back to the castle and began preparations. I placed the boy in a cell, separate from the dog. Perhaps the dog would be useful in my future endeavors. Throughout all of this, they were both in a trance, so I did not have to cope with any sort of resistance from either party. I drew some blood from the boy and drew an alchemic circle on the floor, accurate to the very last detail. It was of utmost importance that it was perfect, otherwise there could be catastrophic consequences. After all of the requirements were met, I prepared the boy for sacrifice. I almost felt sorry for the lad, who was no older than eight. However, I needed to remain steadfast in my goal and not allow morality to interfere. I placed him on the makeshift altar and mentally steeled myself for the ritual decapitation. After my nerve was steeled, I raised the ancestral sword over my head and then the most horrible thing happened. The hound had freed himself of the trance and jumped onto the altar between me and the boy. However, the sword was already swung, striking both the dog and the boy. It was not a fatal wound on either of them, but they bled, and as they bled together, they screamed screams which sounded neither human nor animal. The room began to shake, and as the two fused together into one being of such monstrous aspects, I could not help but shudder. The beast looked nothing like either of the beings used in the fusing, but appeared as an awful chimera. The beast unleashed an unearthly roar, and I believe that it was at this point I had gone mad. I ran to the stairs as fast as I could muster, and locked the door with a special incantation. However, it certainly would not hold a beast that size for long. I ran up the staircase, spiraling, twisting, winding, turning, climbing. It felt as if the beast was breathing down my neck for what seemed to be an impossibly long ascension into the ground floor of the castle. Everything blurred together in one fevered vision, and the only sound that I had heard was the breathing of my hideous creation down my neck. Suddenly, I reached the top and saw only darkness, the absolute absence of any light or color in front of me, beckoning me to step inside. The darkness was almost tangible, feeling subtly like a thousand small hands pushing me forward into the unknown. I stepped forward, and to my surprise, I stepped onto nothing and lost my footing and took a dark plunge into nothingness. I attempted to scream, but the darkness stole the voice from my throat, leaving only silence, the maddening silence. I fell for an indeterminate amount of time until I slammed into a surface with such force I surely should have perished. However, I was merely rendered unconscious. Upon regaining consciousness, I found myself in a place that was familiar to me. The lighting was dim, being cast from small torches lining both sides of the room. As my eyes adjusted to these conditions, I discovered that I was in a doorway 
into a room that looked similar to my study, but everything had horrifying aspects that made it seem I had fallen straight into the pits of hell. The chair behind my desk was turned away from me, but as I approached the room, the chair slowly turned to face me. In it sat the beast, thumbing through my tomes with its grotesque talons. It motioned for me to take a seat opposite it, to which I turned tail and attempted to run, but to my horror, I discovered that the door through which I had entered had ceased to exist. With no other alternative, I reluctantly sat from my beastly host. After a long period of silence, only occasionally broken by the turning of a page, the beast returned a tome to its home on the shelf and looked at me with deep, dark, soulless eyes that faintly glowed with the fires of hell. I could feel my soul rip to shreds when it opened its mouth and a cacophony of noises vaguely resembling words came streaming out. The hideous chimera told me that while I was attempting to conjure a companion, I had accidentally broken the seal between this plane of reality and what we humans refer to as hell. And now I am an unwilling guest within this domain. He said that he had been watching me and my family for some time and was glad that he could finally meet such a tainted soul as mine. He told me that for punishment of my deeds, I would not only bear the internal suffering waiting against my soul, but for the soul of the little boy who I so selfishly willing to sacrifice tenfold. So here I am, doomed to wander hell for all eternity, enduring endless torture at the back of my captor. Let my tale be a lesson to you, that should you ever stumble upon a castle in the middle of the black forest of Germany, stay clear of it, for it has become a portal to the plane of eternal suffering and damnation.